Welcome back to Switch Up Gaming. Thanks so much to Jace Glover for this excellent review and to the developers for the review copy. Remember, we give away a free game every single month, and this month, the one and only Craig Morgan, you have won a copy of Guns Gore and Cannoli 2. Make sure you leave a comment in the description. Well done, my friend. Been waiting to give you a code. After releasing the classic indie title Bastion in 2011 to smashing success, it was hard to imagine developer Supergiant Games being able to raise the bar any further. Jump to three years later and the release of their second title, Transistor, where they took many elements straight from their first game, expanded upon them and then dropped them into a futuristic science fiction setting. With Bastion being one of my all-time favourite indie games, it is surprising that I somehow missed playing Transistor until now, but here we are. So is Supergiant sophomore release more Empire Strikes Back or Speed 2 Cruise Control? Let's find out. When you first boot up the game, there is no title menu and you're shown nothing more than a picture of a woman standing over a man's corpse with a huge sword protruding from his chest. Pressing a button jumps you straight into the game. The sword starts talking, prompting you, the aforementioned woman, to pull it from the dead body. You learn early on that your name is Red and you are, or rather were, a major musical icon in this futuristic city. However, the city itself is being taken over by a mysterious force called the Process. Your voice has been stolen and your life was meant to be taken with it, but instead it was your good friend whose life ended. In this world though, your life and personality are saved inside chips, which the titular sword, the Transistor, can absorb and transform into energy. Watch out. Gross. It is your friend whose voice emits from the sword, and together you traverse the city to find the people behind the process's rampant spread. As a big fan of science fiction, I really enjoy the story here, and I couldn't put the game down until I'd solved its mysteries. Additionally, the presentation is top-notch. Sticking to their bastion roots, Supergiant Games again opt for a dynamic narration and even brought back the supremely talented Logan Cunningham for the voice work. Yikes. Found us already. Whereas Bastion's story was narrated as if everything happening occurred in the past, Transistor's story is told in present tense, which I felt only added to the immersion. Story scores 18 out of 20. With the expansion of the gaming industry and hundreds of games being released per year, I can only imagine the pressure on developers to create something that stands out from the crowd. One way in which many try to create a wholly unique experience is by mashing up genres. Sometimes the combination sounds great but fails in execution. <coughs> Paranautical activity. <coughs> Other times the mashup sounds like it shouldn't work but turns out so well it practically creates a new genre altogether, such as the Pinballvania Yoku's Island Express. I'm happy to report that Transistor falls in the latter category, as it combines action and turn-based strategy RPG elements into a fresh and interesting combat system. As you move your character through the linear maps, you'll come across waves of enemies. You can defeat these in typical real-time action RPG fashion, where each of the four face buttons is assigned to an ability of your choosing. However, the encounters are designed in a way that makes it difficult to be victorious using only this tactic. Instead, you can press ZR to freeze time and enter what the game calls turn mode. This is where the strategy RPG elements come in, as doing this allows you to plan out your next moves until you've used up your full turn bar. Pressing ZL during this phase allows you to reverse a move selection, while pressing ZR a second time prompts your character to perform the selected actions. After leaving this mode, the game returns to full action and there is a cooldown before you can enter it again. Additionally, during this cooldown time, you'll not have access to any of your abilities unless they've been modified with one ability in particular. The setup here makes for interesting decisions on how and when to use your turns because making the wrong choice can leave you vulnerable. I love the way Supergiant Games structured the combat and it feels like nothing else I've played. 
New abilities are unlocked at a decent pace, and they can even be combined to augment them, meaning variety is abundant. If you find the game too easy, they've taken another page out of their own book and added a limiter system. Similar to Bastion's idols, activating these increases the experience gained, but also the difficulty in a number of different ways, and you can activate as many or as few as you like once you've unlocked them. I have to really dig deep to find something to dislike about the gameplay in this one, but I guess if I had to to talk about something, it would be that certain enemies seem disproportionately difficult to handle if there are too many of them. These waves can become frustrating, but this is a small gripe at best. Gameplay overall is fantastic and scores 19 out of 20. In regards to visuals and audio, the world is hand drawn and painted and is absolutely stunning. While there is a lot of sameness in the design of the environments and the enemies throughout the game, I don't consider this a negative point here. The city of Cloudbank is a futuristic one where everything, including the colour of the sky and the weather, is controlled via computers. So it makes sense that buildings and streets would have some standardization. Additionally, the whole point of the process taking over the city is to remove all personality and uniqueness from the world. So again, it stands to reason that every bot you fight has a similar design. Logan Cunningham's voice work is once again outstanding and believable. Waves. So, don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this. The soundtrack is fantastic, with a couple of fully voiced tracks thrown in, and it's one I would definitely be listening to at work. When you speak, I hear silence. A nice addition to the game is a hub where you can partake in challenges, whereby clearing one unlocks a musical track. These can then be scrolled through and listened to at your leisure within the hub. Combat sounds are adequate and serve their purpose but are not nearly as memorable as the soundtrack itself. The game performs perfectly in both docked and handheld mode and I encountered no issues during my playthrough. It is obvious how much love and care has been poured into every aspect of it and visuals receive 19 out of 20 while audio scores 18 out of 20. Transistor is releasing at $19.99 or £15.49. For that price, you're getting a unique and wonderful game that will last you anywhere between 6 and 12 hours, depending on your level of completion. I recognise that it's not the longest game out there for the price, and that it is a re-release of a four-year-old game. But it's more than easy to recommend picking this up on Nintendo Switch, whether it's your first time with it or just a revisit. Value scores 17 out of 20, and you can bump this up a couple of points if the developer offers a bundle or discount deal with Bastion at some point. To conclude, Supergiant Games did what I thought nearly impossible, by taking the core of a game near to perfect in my eyes and somehow tweaking and improving upon it to raise the bar even further. Transistor truly is a special game, worthy of a re-release, and one that should not be missed or overlooked on Nintendo Switch. It receives an overall Switch Up score of 91%. Thanks so much to Jason. Well done to Craig Morgan. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Remember, for all things Switch all the time, keep it Switch Up. Cheers, guys. See ya!